today we will be discussing on uh, uh, one of the most popular ground ground improvement techniques uh, the use of preloading and uh, vertical drains in the area of uh, ground improvement particularly when uh, you are concerned with uh, soft soils uh, the soft soils are particularly highly compressible and most of them they are normally consolidated or their ore consolidation ratio is uh, very low in the sense that it could be 1.3 or 1.5 or 2 less than 2 where you have high elastic plus plastic deformations uh, and then the soils could uh, exist even whatever maybe 5 meters depth or 10 meters depth or infinite depth. Um, the moment you load these uh, soils uh, because of the uh, buildings and highway embankments uh, you end up having a lot of settlements bearing capacity of the soil is very low and uh, how do you handle this uh, particular problem in uh, soft soils is something that we would be discussing today. In fact, uh, all the east coast and west coast of India and many places they all have soft soils say for example, right from Calcutta to uh, Vishakhapatnam to the tip of uh, whole of Tamil Nadu east coast and west coast and also Kandla many 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 places you have soft soils and you have lot of settlements many of them you have port, port structures here and uh, they have been using some of these techniques it some of them are not new they have been using this uh, pre compression and uh, uh, vertical drains more than for the about more than 20 years and we will just see how they are useful today in this uh, particular lecture. This uh, use of uh, pre compression or preloading has resulted in a number of uh, techniques uh, which have been used in the field. Actually, the as I just said some of the soils are normally consolidated. So, if you pre compress or like you apply the uh, higher load such that the settlements are going to be less uh, it is called pre loading. So, what we do in this technique is that we apply a higher stress than uh, what what the load uh, the what is the stress that that is likely to come on the soil. So, that the settlements are preempted like we accelerate the process of settlements uh, by using preload and once you construct the structure you will not have much settlements. So, that is what we say it is called pre compression or preloading. Then uh, the in this uh, case of uh, pre compression the uh, consolidation of the soil in the vertical direction say for example, if you apply load uh, consolidation occurs and then the consolidation process uh, results in uh, settlement. So, the acceleration of uh, the settlements is because of vertical loading and uh, that is uh, okay to some extent, but when the soils are of high compressible nature you need to provide sand, sand drains also. Actually the sand drains what they, what they do is that they will also provide radial consolidation. So, you have uh, consolidation in the vertical direction and then the water is also coming out in the uh, horizontal direction or radial direction. So, we call them as uh, uh, sand drains and uh, so the process of combining both uh, vertical consolidation and uh, radial consolidation has been initiated with uh, sand drains in 1930s in the, in the right in the beginning. The moment people understand underst they had some idea of the consolidation behavior they were able to understand that yes uh, if you are able to apply some sort of um, uh, consolidation in the radial direction also it is helpful. So, in fact, I will give you a classical example if you are trying to do a triaxial test in a consolidation in a triaxial test in a uh, clay you put uh, filter papers at the top and bottom and also you surround the sample with some sort of filter paper where you have all the vertical drains like we call there. Now, you can actually you will see that if you do a consolidation test there is a big difference in the way you know the consolidation process itself like it could be 3 or 4 times you must have I do not know if you have observed, but the fact is that if you if you have radial consolidation alone it is one thing I mean vertical consolidation alone it is one thing, but if you have radial consolidation together then there is an excellent combination. So, you have sand drains and uh, since sand drains were uh, somewhat you know the thing is that was people were using in the olden days, but now you have what is called prefabricated vertical drains like you can see that you have a prefabricated vertical drains which are like uh, these are all called a prefabricated vertical drains in which you have a uh, see the if you put it in the soil then this is called a geotextile and then this is a drain inside you have a drain inside 
which has uh, uh, drainage channels. So, the what the moment you apply the load water comes here and then goes to the drainage channels. So, this is one type here there is another type here like you can have a, a drainage medium here like drainage channels here. Then uh, you also have some more like the this the top one is called drainage the filter me, filter cloth and the, the, this one is called drainage medium. And uh, what we do is that earlier there was a circular sand drain which is about maybe 30 centimeters or 20 15 centimeters diameter. But then now you have this type of material uh, where you have a consolidation um, which is uh, quite fast using this technique. So, we will see that this is called prefabricated vertical drains and you also have some more materials in the similar lines here again some more there are different companies and actually what happens with this techniques is that uh, the consolidation instead of 8 to 9 years or maybe 4 5 years it comes down to 9 months or 10 years because you would like to accelerate the, cons uh, the consolidation and construct uh, at least next year like you know you go to your coastal areas what you should do is that within maybe uh, you try to con accelerate the consolidation in a period of 6 months to 1 year then start highway operation construction next year that is a normal plan. So, when uh, the these materials will help you to consolidate within 9 to 9 months to 1 year then their purpose is served. So, there is no point in having this plastic material inside the ground when their purpose is served and uh, you have what is called jute geotextile. So, this jute geotextile is sufficient and um, though this is biodegradable it is uh, it, it may last for 1 or two, two, one and a half to 2 years, but then once you put like this then uh, the, the same purpose is served as that of this material. The difference is that this will not stay in the ground, but whereas this stays in the ground and uh, that way we can say that uh, um, you are trying to provide a sort of a, a environmental friendly technologies using this sort of materials and also in India you have this is another one uh, this is called coir this is again same coir which we normally know. So, both coir and geotextile are abundantly available in India and people can uh, develop some of this um, uh, uh, the prefabricated vertical drains and use it in the field and they are may be good for 9 months or to 1 year, but then uh, we have seen that they have all the required properties which, which are comparable to the synthetic materials and they are helpful. So, essentially we will be seeing some of these uh, materials here. Uh, so, this is a typical example that I would be showing here. Uh, so, this is a clay soil which is about to say 9 to 10 meters then you have a fill. So, this is a typical example for a pre compression. So, what we do is that we apply some sort of surcharge which is little you know the total load is really higher fill plus surcharge they act on the uh, clay soil. And uh, you can see that if you just plot that uh, settlement versus time, uh, the settlement in the case of uh, uh, this um, uh, clay without surcharge is like this and then with surcharge it is like this. So, what we are trying to do is that in this process like the settlement that is supposed to take uh, place here like it is you are trying to accelerate within some time like you know because of the higher load it happens within this time like this is nothing but the time for equivalent uh, settlement with surcharge and you remove the surcharge. The moment you remove the settlement occurs you can remove the surcharge. So, you can monitor the settlements in the field and then remove the surcharge. So, the thing is actually this is called uh, you know this is what we need this is you have to design for this particular time which is very uh, useful input into our own, own design whole design process here. So, this is the same example like you have a designed load say for example, some 100 kPa is acting. So, maybe you put 150 kPa or 200 kPa you know depends that also you should calculate how much of surcharge should be put. So, design load is something 100 kPa you can put 150 kPa here. So, what happens is that this could be the thing you know then remove that and then it comes back. So, the thing is the final settlements are always going to be like this and the it is it is an effective technique for accelerating the consolidation settlements and clay soils. So, the principle is that say so like you must be able to calculate uh, this is the load that you are expecting this is the load plus the whatever whatever is the stress that you are expecting from the building plus the uh, fill total surcharge. So, this is higher as I just mentioned you you need like say for example, SC is a settlement under the load 
SC plus SC is a load under the uh, uh, the fill plus the so the uh, primary compression. Actually, this is a primary compression. So you you can get within time t two, which is required here. So to calculate this uh, uh, t two, we have a simple technique. We'll see that the uh, we know that this is the proposed structural load. Say for example, I said hundred kPa. Under the thickness of the clay layer undergoing consolidation is HC. It can be a you know double drainage and single drainage conditions we know in soil mechanics. So this is a standard expression that we have for calculation of settlements like CC into HC by one plus E naught to, to log of this uh, the stress caused due to the additional load. One can use uh, see with this uh, to calculate this stress. You have to use uh, proper equations. There are uh, analysis methods available to calculate the ex, uh, stress. So you calculate this, um, uh, this stress at a particular point. What is the stress extra stress because of the load that you should be able to calculate uh, from uh, many of the uh, elastic stress distribution theories we have them. Um, so then this is the orig original overburden pressure. So you know how to calculate settlement. So now the other thing is that if you have the same you know whatever is extra load you have higher load that is it. So, when you have higher load and of course, E naught is the initial void ratio of the sample or the void ratio at that particular depth. So, our objective is that the within settlement uh, within this uh, total settlement should occur within time T 2 which is much sh shorter than T 1 and uh, then we apply some sort of temporary surcharge on the ground surface for the time t2 we will just keep. So, for example, how do you apply the uh, temporary surcharge you have sandbags, sandbags and some of the material I will show you or whatever you know a weight uh, heavy material you can keep it and then the settlement will be equal to SCP. So, at the time if the surcharge is removed and a structure with a permanent load is uh, built no appreciable settlement will occur. So, this as I said they are all done by temporary fills. So, like this understanding can be obtained with reference to what is called the degree of consolidation at time t2 this is what we are interested. So, that is defined in terms of the settlement the ratios of settlement at the for the load p divided by the uh, settlement at the load for the uh, p plus f. So, like we have the expressions for both of them in the previous uh, expressions we have seen like uh, we have seen these two expressions and uh, ratios of that you all other things get cancelled and you have these terms it is simple to understand what we do is that these are the simple expressions what we are trying to do is that you try to express in terms of the sigma naught here and then this is one thing. Uh, so, you try to simplify this particular uh, term. Uh, so, the degree of consolidation that you need at the point T 2 you try to express in terms of uh, the you know this is one ratio which will give you that uh, uh, this is one simple ratio which is a extra load that you should apply in relation to its uh, initial work burden pressure and this is that uh, load that you should apply in excess or you know as a ratio of the you know how much of fill load is you have to apply. So, these two are the two ratios that are quite important like one ratio is nothing but the it is a ratio in relation to the overburden uh, pressure sigma naught sigma naught is nothing but gamma into h at any point. So, then how much of extra that ratio how much of uh, say for example, I just mentioned um, instead of 100 uh, this uh, this is 100 100 kPa this could be 200 kPa some ratio one should have. So, uh, actually we one can uh, the degree of uh, consolidation you see is a function of these two variables like the same variable is coming here also you can see that this then this is another variable. So, once you know these two coefficients you can calculate the degree of uh, consolidation at point T 2. So, actually one can do a simple excel plot take the same equation and then plot. So, the degree of consolidation one can obtain here like uh, say for example, you can see that we need uh, good degree of consolidation right our objective is to get a very good degree of consolidation and then 
this is the ratio which will give you the so for example this is the ratio uh, of the delta p delta sigma with respect to the initial effective stress and it can be 0 0.1 0 0.5 1 2 5 10 it can be some numbers like see initially it could be just maybe say 10 kPa how much of extra you are putting because that is a additional load and this is actually the other other one as I just mentioned the ratio of the fill load is coming here. So, using this plot you one can get this uh, uh, the information uh, on T 2 like you have to fix up is it 6 months or 9 months or 1 year you can fix it up and by working out uh, all these combinations you can get the number I will just see an example. Then the degree of consolidation that we have is actually the degree of consolidation at time 2. What we do is that um, it is an average value you know see you have about 10 meters depth you are just at uh, some point you are calculating the average value everything is average. So, when you remove the surcharge and place the structural load some portion of the clay close to the drainage surface will uh, continue to swell and the soil close to the mid plane will continue to settle. So, what we do is that actually you know the degree of in a clay embankment uh, the different points will have different degrees of consolidation you know like you know if uh, for example if they so you, you, you can you will see that actually you know at the you know you must have seen in the theory that um, uh, you have that uh, lines of different degrees of consolidation like this where you have uh, both and uh, top both top and bottom there are open surfaces free surface the pore pressure is 0 right pore pressure is 0 then at the midpoint the degree of consolidation will be little higher because it is away. So, that depends on the permeability of the soil. So, what we do is that the uh, that particular thing we assume that since you know this particular thing is there removal of surcharge and the placement of structural load what it does is that uh, portion of the clay close to the drainage surface will continue to swell because you removed the load. So, there is some small minor changes in the soil and uh, soil close to the mid plane will continue to settle. So, to balance out there is an approximate uh, assumption that um, the whatever you have degree of consolidation is the mid mid plane degree of consolidation we are just trying to average it out like this so this familiar uh, thing we know like we assume that the degree of uh, consolidation is what you get is a mid plane uh, consolidation and we know this time factor you know consolidation theory c v t 2 by h square c v is a coefficient of consolidation t 2 is a time and maximum drainage path. So, uh, we also know this particular plot uh, time factor versus degree of consolidation which is a standard uh, thing that we know in soil mechanics. So, knowing this how do you solve the problem it is a very interesting simple problem that I want to illustrate. Uh, you are trying to construct a highway bridge and then the permanent load on the clay layer is expected to increase by 115 kilo newton per meter cube you are getting some extra load ok. Uh, there is some load you know uh, already there is some uh, overburden at a midpoint say for example I said it is 10 meters. 10 meters is thickness of the clay layer. So, at 5 meters the uh, the uh, overburden pressure is 210 kilo meter per meter cube you know how do you get that gamma into h right. So, this is square 210 kilo per meter square. So, uh, then you know the consolidation C C and E naught y ratio and you know it is uh, even consolidation uh, coefficient of consolidation also actually we will try to put in terms of months because uh, you what you do in the lab is just you try to calculate for seconds, but I would I want to for you know for example 8 months and 10 months I am interested. So, I am putting everything in months. So, this is soil is normally consolidated. Now, I would like to uh, calculate the primary consolidation settlement of the bridge uh, structure without compression pre compression and what is the surcharge required to eliminate the primary consolidation uh, in 9 months by PD compression this is what I want to do. So, I just calculated in this particular uh, steps what is the settlement you can just see 415 mm it is very high about nearly 1 and a half foot right like you have all the CC, HC and 1.27 all that numbers are given then I would like to eliminate this by using uh, the pre the pre compression technique. So, my objective is now T 2 is 9 months and all these equations are given. So, T V I calculated T V I calculated and I got 0 0.27 ok. 
So, we have a figure 3 just as we discussed for uh, point uh, 27 the value of the uh, degree of consolidation is 40 percent. So, with that in mind what we have is that uh, you have d p this is already known and the ratio of uh, d p by d naught is this 0.458 you will get and then there is a figure that I just showed you that for u d you know like me which, which, which will give you the mid, mid plane potential uh, mid plane consolidation response u for u equal to 40 percent the ratio is 0.448 and uh, you can work out that you know with all some things being known the extra fill required is 287.5 kilo per meter square. Actually the thing is in this case in the soil you know the soil I have purposefully uh, taken uh, that the soil is very loose or very poor soil actually the soil liquid limit the liquid limit is very high and all that and uh, with the result um, the you can see that it is 287 um, KPI is a high number. Normally what they do in the field is that normally if it the soil is somewhat say for example, a lower uh, type of lower liquid limit and all that little like say for example, liquid limit is about 30 percent and all that are 50 percent. One can really say that it may this will the load will not be this much it may be about 100 or uh, maybe 150 or something. So, how do you do this uh, now preload now you got an amount of uh, how much of preload should be applied the delta sigma uh, f you got 287.5 kilo per meter square. So, how do you get it for a simple example I assume uh, I had to fill. So, fill material I will take it is about 20 kilo per meter cube bulk density and uh, 5 meters it gives a preload of 100 kilo per meter square. So, suppose I take sandbags which have this density of 20 and then load everything up to and load it up to 5 meters and uh, so density should be able to correct uh, um, properly say if it is 19 put 19. So, uh, preload will be about 100 and then if I uh, make it for uh, leave it just for 9 months then you have to monitor settlements also. So, it is uh, we expect that the settlements will be sufficient, but normally you know what happens the see you are in a place where everything is clay and to get a preload is very expensive like even 1 meter 2 meters 3 meters is very expensive. Maybe normally people uh, look for about 3 or 4 5 meters they cannot go for like you know it becomes expensive imagine a place where um, everything is clay it is a uh, uh, what is that it is a an island it is full of clay and uh, you want to get sand where do you get sand or where do you get uh, weights it is very difficult. So, it becomes very expensive. So, what we do is that in this particular exam I mean normally we can that is the reason why we are trying to increase this degree of consolidation by other means. In this case what is happening it is only the vertical consolidation that is occurring now we try to use the sand drains or a PVDs and let us see what is going to happen this can be worked out it is a simple thing. So, required surcharge is higher than the preload and hence cons consolidation by sand drains or PVDs is required. So, we will see and uh, so this is a typical preload how it looks like it is so difficult you see like you know it is quite difficult like you know you may just dump it maybe this is about 5 to 6 meters or 7 meters like you know you have to make some arrangements and uh, how are you sure that the preload is effective there are number of issues, but still it is a technique that has been quite uh, uh, useful and people have used it for uh, uh, many years like you know before 1970s and 60s this is a technique that people used. So, what is that advantage you can see here like you have a preload you have the you know this is extra uh, you know uh, the uh, whatever is the surcharge you are trying to place it is a consolidation is only vertical you know slow draining subsoil you know because the consolidation of the soil is less. So, that is a problem, but here because of the uh, provision of the drains like uh, this as I just mentioned like this if you have drains uh, at every proper spacing and all that you can see that there is a consolidation occurring here because of that you know like all the drains you know. So, that is the reason why it is going to be very effective. So, these are the you know as I said it is a filter jacket you have a plastic core and um, these things act as the drainage channels actually the advantage is that see the uh, like you know the I must tell you the difference you know sand sand is one thing that you normally you can use the same thing for sand drains ok. Sand drains you will get it and the advantage of the sand drains yes is that if they are cheaper and economically viable it is all right. But the problem is that over a period of time the clay and sand gets mixed up and uh, there will be a problem you know between the so soil and sand and clay there will be some place where 
the permeability is again a poor you know some uh, sand will not be sand uh, column will not be complete sand drain it will be some other extra like you know some um, area gets uh, smudged or what you call we call it smear zone and that's uh, the permeability of the, uh, uh, the smear zone is very important and um, the advantage is that like uh, if you have radial consolidation you can see the difference here see uh, you can see that with time and then this is settlement axis and with vertical drains this is without drains this is the degree of consolidation drains without surcharge is one thing drains with surcharge and removal of you can see that within this construction period you know you specify that uh, some time you know all consolidation is complete whatever settlements over. So, this is a very very ideal uh, technique for uh, accelerating consolidation. So, as I just mentioned the purpose of the, the uh, ground report technique is very important. In this case we are looking at uh, accelerating consolidation as the main purpose and uh, so for example if I say that the sand sand can also wo work as uh, uh, stone column type of thing you know we call it sand compaction piles but the difference is that here it is a drainage is the main thing in the sand compaction piles it is a bearing capacity that is more important. So, one should not mix up both the issues and one should clearly understand the purpose for which it is designed here the it is uh, being used because it is a radi radial consolidation has uh, been uh, quite useful in increasing the rate of consolidation. So, as I just mentioned the radius of sand drains or the you know sand drains or the derivatives such as sand wicks or you know these are all its derivatives whether it is a uh, this is a choir one this is a jute one they can be all uh, very uh, we say that you know sand drains are circular in cross section like we just say 10 centimeters of the drain will use it. But for the prefabricated drains because you know this is actually easy to install why this is in the shape you know the thing is that uh, the shape is very important here that uh, sand drains actually we make a bore and then put the sand and all that here we make a you know we will just see that technique where you know you install um, uh, this thing and then put in uh, there is an installation technique specific one here and uh, because to suit that we should come up with the shape and uh, so for uh, prefabricated drains the situation is different in the sense that it cannot be circular and actually the band shape of the prefabricated drains, uh, prefabricated drains the flow pattern around the drain is considerably altered from the cylindrical case therefore an equivalent drain radius ought to be calculated. Actually we have a, a standard diameter in the circular one but here we try to use an expression like this equivalent diameter is 2 into b plus t by pi this is what we use where b is the width of the strip this is the width of the strip then this is the thickness of the strip. So, you get equivalent diameter. So, there are some so just to get an idea what is this you know you can see that it is about uh, maybe 900 mm or something like that and these are all different sizes you can see that. So, you can see that uh, one of the the Kelch Gelman is something one of the popular uh, persons who did lot of work in uh, vertical drains and uh, in fact they were using inside one is called core the outer one is called filter they were using cardboard papers as for drainage and the dimensions were 100 mm into 3 mm. Then PVC, PVC one case, geo drains another example PE is a polyethylene cellulose and coal blonde is another so some company which has a polyester inside you know so for example this inside one core is a polyester the outside is polypropylene like that. So, essentially uh, the size is something very important this is very crucial. So, the pre consolidation of uh, uh, soil in a vertical direction is a very uh, uh, you know in the in the pre preloading you know it is only the vertical one that is effective, but since uh, in the case of uh, the PVDs and sand drains you have uh, the radial consolidation also what happens is that the it, it results in lesser preload like as I just mentioned I cannot be, uh, get all the our objective in this case was to increase the rate of consolidation and uh, in the case of uh, preload it was requiring very huge amount of preload to be applied on the sample. But here uh, what we are doing is that we are able to have a good uh, combination and come up with um, radial consolidation 
in addition to vertical consolidation uh, significantly increasing the uh, consolidation rates. As I just mentioned the sand drains were used since 1930s and prefabricated vertical drains in the form of cardboard wicks were also used initially in up to 1950s and 60s. Now prefabricated vertical drains are being used actually this is quite effective and in addition there are so many advantage uh, the advances in this area that uh, see like you know one way of doing uh, applying load is that you apply some uh, load you can also apply vacuum what you are doing is that you are removing water you know by adding loading uh, uh, clay soil what are you doing is that you are trying to uh, remove the uh, water or reduce the water content. So, instead of that you can as well apply some suction you know so for example we are used to removing uh, um, the you know from in the specific gravity test you know we are used to vacuum pump you know. So, you try to remove all the air or uh, all the water and whatever is present. So, you try to create a vacuum uh, which can really suck all the water. So, that is a one thing that we will see again and uh, so, this is another major uh, advantage in the uh, recent times uh, we will see some of that. So, how do you go about calculations that is very important. So, to increase the degree of consolidation using sand drains or PVDs average degree of consolidation due to drainage is like now you say that U V R, U R is nothing but 1 minus so 1 minus U R into 1 minus V. So, both radial and uh, vertical uh, consolidation uh, uh, the, the degrees of consolidation are used and how do you calculate them is what we will see now. So, average degree of consolidation due to radial direction only okay. this is an expression uh, which is uh, derived okay. and uh, so this term m is given in terms of m is n square minus uh, n square divided by n square minus s square s is the spacing of the drains. So, this is an expression which will uh, have uh, the permeability of uh, the uh, uh, the sand drains actually the this two are you know the permeabilities in the of the soil in the horizontal direction and then the permeability in the smear zone as I just mentioned uh, that uh, between the two uh, like you have a uh, sand drain then you have a clay here next to that some amount of uh, material is we call it smear zone and uh, the permeability is little low there you know immediately after the clay uh, surface I mean immediately after the sand you know from sand it should come to you know from the uh, from the drainage medium it should come to clay. The permeability needs to change drastically but it is not so but there is some area where there is a low pocket of uh, clay where there is a less permeability. So, uh, we need to calculate the drain spacing which is nothing but uh, which is nothing but R e by R w like it is nothing but R e is the equivalent uh, radius of the uh, configuration because we act we assume that each drain has an influencing area around it and then the radius of that is R e and then the R w is the radius of the drain ok. So, and then as I just mentioned K H and K R are the permeabilities and then once you know this say for example, we calculated the C V R right yeah. Yeah. So, you have to calculate essentially the time factors. So, you know there is a coefficient of consolidation for radial drainage and uh, you calculate changes in void ratio and all these uh, factors. And once you know this uh, radial consolidation coefficient then our problem is solved essentially what we are doing is that. And for no smear case R s equal to R w and K h equal to K r and s equal to 1 and the, so whatever is the earlier equation it is a somewhat simpler and this is for radial uh, consolidation. So, next one is the um, you have a similar equation for the vertical consolidation which we know in from the theory itself from the uh, soil mechanics theory like you know T v by you know that uh, for degree of consolidation between 0 to 61 equation we have those things. So, use those equations and uh, go ahead with design and then use the expression in this like uh, 
yeah in these expressions so your is to be calculated and uv we know from fundamentals of soil mechanics that vertical consolidation theory we know so using the time factor and all that one can calculate so you substitute that there will be a big difference so, so this is the one that causes a uh, major difference and uh, so this vertical consolidation is known this is what you have to calculate this is a function of the as you just saw the uh, permeability of the uh, soil permeability of the, the I mean the diameter as also a plays a role like as you just saw like you no know, number of uh, sand drains how many sand drains you have to put finally all that so all these things are important and once you know that you calculate that and then uh, use that uh, regular equations like uh, like one can get a, a simple uh, degree of consolidation with the drains without drains and if the horizontal permeability is equal to vertical permeability what happens normally horizontal permeability will be higher than the vertical permeability so that also you can calculate in fact uh, we have we have made some calculations i will show you later where uh, it is also a very significant uh, variable because many of the soils are stratified in nature and we can't take vertical permeability equal to horizontal permeability always the horizontal permeability is higher so once you put in that particular thing and then one can develop uh, some sort of equations where the degree of consolidation with drain without drains is about very i mean uh, could be very slow but with uh, pvds uh, taking vertical and uh, horizontal permeability same there will be very good difference but if it really take the uh, um, permeability in the horizontal direction as higher than the uh, vertical one you get a very good difference so you may just see that it's very effective maybe as i said within 9 months or 6 months whatever you want one can design the spacing and all that and then uh, complete the project that's a beauty here so it's very simple technique and uh, one can effectively use that and we'll see some how it can be done in the field and all that so essentially i just mentioned the rate of consolidation and the settlement is controlled how rapidly the pore pressure can escape from the soil so the spacing and the permeability of the soil are the important variables okay and uh, so one can actually what we do is that we set, we develop a set of design curves of drain spacing fill height and consolidation time you know the thing is like uh, see you know that there are three or four variables here you know your degree of very uh, the thing is you also have the preload is there preload is there but if you want to minimize the preload like you have to see the what spacing you should uh, provide so is a spacing uh, you know if you provide a wider spacing the probability is that the, the preload will be higher but then if you want to reduce the preload then you need to come to come back to a closer spacing uh, something and then the permeability also of course you can't change the permeabilities permeabilities in both horizontal and uh, vertical direction should be measured in the field okay laboratory tests will give you some information but then field permeability results are very going to be very accurate because you you cannot make an error in this cases because everything depends on the permeability of the in situ soil right so you need to develop a set of design curves like it's a parametric study one can do uh, addressing what should be the fill height consolidation time and the spacing and all that and you will get uh, reasonably like you know you have specified say for example instead of 6 months you want to say 1 year you can say that you know so the thing is like it depends on your requirement if you can allow for one year it is different nine months it can be different so you can do a parametric study of all these factors and fix up a particular most appropriate thing like you know for example the fill quantities the fill quantities that as uh, uh, that you want as preload you may be limited so you need to consider that that is an imp important variable because it's going to be very expensive in a project to get a preload from uh, different places when uh, you know it's uh, when you need to say 5 to 10 meters if you want to construct it's not possible so you'd like to reduce it to a, to a maximum extent and see that uh, there is an optimum combination of all these factors and uh, it's going to be cost effective uh, i would like to just highlight uh, some advantages of the prefabricated vertical drains or sand drains in fact sand drains have been effective but the fact is that this uh, this uh, this all sand drains have a sort of you know you have to make a bore and then the puts uh, the sand material whereas some of these materials have to be mesh uh, mesh with using meshes you have to do that so in fact 5000 meters per day can be done it's a very fast like one can do very fast like you know like what you should do is that it just say 10 meters is the depth of soil to be improved so it just there is a mission that takes it down there is a this thing they like you know it doesn't you can't then there is a they have to cut it 
and then there is a drain that gets established. So, the advantage is that they are very fast that is one number there is no risk of PBDs breaking installation while sand drains may have discontinuous if the mantle is withdrawn too fast like you know if you remove that particular mantle the problem is that the uh, uh, you know this is all somewhat stronger material. In fact, whereas sand the sand material fails by shear you know shear strength and all you know those things are somewhat important and um, they may have discontinuities also in the process of uh, doing that. So, it may not be as good as compared to this like you know it is uh, number one the reason is that um, the shear failure of the pivotis is during the settlement is less whereas sand drains are vulnerable to shear failure during settlement like you know there could be some movements and all that it is not easy for in terms of the quality control. The other important thing is the PVDs have discharge capacities which are very high like you know you just said actually the beauty here is that as I just mentioned this filter allows only water all the clay is outside. So, it is a, then only water goes inside. So, it is an excellent filter cloth and the inside is what is an excel, uh, the excellent drainage cloth and the, all the water will come up it gets pumped up and uh, you know it is a either you know it goes down or something you have you know either you know it is all by gravity you know it anyhow water is released because it is uh, open to atmosphere and then water comes out. So, you can see that the uh, drainage capacities are quite like you know so for example, 30 to 90 here whereas, the discharge capacity with a say 30 centimeter 35 centimeters diameter sand drain has a discharge capacity of 20 into 10 power of minus 6 meter cube per second how much of water ok. Uh, so, this is here you can see it is more 30 to 90 about much higher ok. So, when installed with a properly designed mantle smear effects are much less for PVDs than for large diameter sand drains as I just mentioned the sand drains uh, have a smear effects. So, the zone of smear is directly proportional to the diameter of the mantle used for installation. So, PVDs are factory produced materials and are quality controlled whereas, sand drains are subject to the quality variance of, of naturally occurring sands. We know that the sand occurs natural it is a natural material there could be problems of gradation and all that it is not easy to get but whereas, like it is quite simple you know the thing is the purpose that uh, you want to have from sand is a good drainage. But uh, if that depends on the gradation characteristics of the sand, its availability, its uh, time effects. So, there are so many issues there. Of course, the time is short here. Like you would like to have, it's about nine months. But the fact is that these they are all processed materials. That's a very good advantage. So that's the reason why, because of its ease, uh, ease with which it can be done, like easy fabrication, easy quality control, economy, and small disturbance on soil during installation. Uh, these techniques are particularly using PVDs are in a uh, used in a significant way. As I just mentioned the vertical drains can be in uh, some spacing either it a triangular or a square similar to stone columns. Consolidation problem is simplified to an axis symmetric one say for example, uh, there is a Barron's theory of radial consolidation one should read that ok there is a Barron's theory of radial consolidation uh, which is we know Terzeg is the one, one dimensional consolidation which is vertical. So, you need to read this Barron's papers and some more additional papers we have which like uh, it is a very classical work. So, uh, we use that particular thing and we assume that you have a, uh, a material here and then it has a effective uh, drainage area. Uh, you have an effective drainage area that is what we call it. So, an equivalent radius of the soil cylinder based on the same total area for different installation patterns is used like say for example, installation is also an important variable here ok. So, this is a square pattern is one way like you know you have uh, four uh, sand drains here and the triangular is also one thing like it can be a hexagonal type this is one important thing. Very important thing is that when you are trying to construct uh, the uh, preloading and all these equipment I mean or even the sand drains uh, or even the prefabricated vertical drains one should uh, really uh, do some sort of trials in the field. How do you do the trials in the field actually this is a very popular concept in uh, west west in the sense particularly in Netherlands and uh, say for example, if you go to Scandinavian countries like uh, Denmark 
Finland and all that the soil is so soft many of the techniques will not work you know the maximum ground movement techniques were done in those areas in 60s and 70s and even now it is an exciting area for geotechnical engineering if somebody uh, has a chance you know it is an exciting area to be in that uh, countries Scandinavia, Denmark, Netherlands all those Finland where lot of geotechnical activity is going on and they have done lot of work quality work and then they have been trendsetters for the rest of the world. And then they say because we know that say we try to work on the properties that are uh, you obtained from the lab or from the field and then you are trying to assess the performance of the embankment. Best way is to construct an embankment itself like 5, five meters height or 3 meters height or whatever height you want and uh, uh, the advantage is that if you have that type of uh, thing it avoids the um, uh, uncertainties that you have with reference to sampling then other uh, difficulties like uh, you know installation. Then the other advantage is that you should be able to if, it, if at all you have decided about constructing a trial embankment you must be able to make it say for example if you are trying to construct a 5 meter embankment connecting two villages. So, for example, the villages are 20 meters 20 kilometers apart you need a, uh, a two a highway embankment between the two villages and then the you know the high, height of the embankment is about 5 meters and you know the slopes everything is known. So, that vertical you can as well construct about uh, say for example, uh, uh, 100 meters or 50 meters uh, trail embankment and then do all the experiment before you really take up the work. Then once you understand everything from that then that can be used as input for improving the rest of the work that is the thing that we are trying to do here. So, it needs to reproduce stress and field conditions that are representative of the actual structure. So, that you can use whatever information and uh, uh, you get from that in a proper way and better that it is a part of the final structure. So, for example, if the alignment is uh, between two villages connect above connecting uh, uh, them by I mean for a distance of about 20 kilometers that particular thing whatever say for example, 50, kilo, 50 meters could be a, a trial embankment. In fact, I had opportunities to see many trial embankments in uh, Bangkok. In fact, banks, bam, the Bangkok uh, soft soil is so bad that they did particularly Asians of technology they did so much of work on soft soils like they have particularly from Professor Bergardo there are many people working in the area and then even in Singapore uh, Professor uh, many many like you know, so even Singapore soil is also very soft and very tricky you know clay problems are always tricky. So, they did lot of work using some of the uh, concepts and they say that it should be the part of the final, final structure and um, actually the thing is okay uh, you have to measure the performance of the uh, trial embankment. How do you do measuring? You have to measure pore pressures, you have to do settlement gauges, you have to have leveling points all that you know essentially why are you doing is that the our objective is to reduce the settlements. You can see here one simple example ok. See the thing is see uh, there is a water table here most of the time there is a always a problem like you know you are trying to uh, soil is water water is there existing you are supposed to construct sometimes under the you know water also you should construct how do you do this. So, this is all soft soil here ok. Then you have an embankment here which is supposed to be a proposed embankment you can put a surcharge like this here ok. You can put a surcharge here. So, this is a drainage blanket which we normally because see these are all the, P, the what is the PVDs or sand drains. The thing is that this uh, the uh, sand drains as is just mentioned when the water comes out the you know the effective stress like you know the, the uh, they are open to atmosphere. So, there is no pressure there. So, that is how it is and this all that and uh, here you see that this is called uh, settlement platforms you have to see how is a whole embankment settlement settle, settling you have 1, 2, 3 uh, settlement uh, platforms you know that have been installed in the you can clearly see that they are installed in the uh, drainage blanket we call it it is very clear and then this is on either side of the center line it is very clear you have this sort of settlement gauges clearly then uh, per uh, piezometers. So, you are only trying to measure on one side of the uh, this thing because this side it is uh, this is actually uniform area 
you can see that the area is quite uniform. You put piezometers here. Piezometer means they measure pore pressures because you are applying load and when you apply load see the thing is before uh, construction of this embankment there is no pore pressure is it not. So, there is no pore pressure like you know you are trying to measure pore pressure here, pore pressure here, pore pressure here there are 4 points here. So, you are trying to construct pore pressures. <coughs> so, what we do is that these pore pressure uh, are continuously measured you know okay, whatever some uh, frequency of intervals could be there and uh, once you measure the pore pressures and settlement gauges you will you will be much more comfortable ok. So, that is a very important concept here that the instrumentation is a very vital component particularly in soft soils and uh, so much of work was done on these lines and um, they use uh, you know you are applying some stress you are applying then you are trying to measure pore pressures you are trying to measure settlements. So, it is like you know constitutive modeling has been very powerful tool to understand all of this like uh, suppose there is an extra load applied how much of pore pressures are mobilized how much of uh, uh, settlement occurred. So, that is what one can do here say like they keep on constructing they see once you they, the way we start is that this is a pore pressure this is settlement gauge the moment you up put some layer of say for example, 1 meter of embankment then there will be pore pressures mobilized and uh, settlements induced. So, measure the settlements and pore pressures put one more layer of compaction or the uh, sand you know this all uh, embankment put keep on putting it and putting this uh, even put the what is that uh, surcharge also. So, monitor for at least one year two years at least one year then because it is one full season it will give a good information ok. So, this is how we do that and this is a typical construction in fact you can see that uh, sand is coming here and uh, being you know this is what uh, it is going under the paddy field. In fact, this is what I I mean I was seeing in a typical Kerala also where you have lot of paddy fields and then between two villages you try to construct uh, a road and then you know you have to reduce destroy all the paddy fields and then go ahead with construction. So, I was wondering is the development cost uh, the cost of development you know is uh, it leads to uh, reduction in the food grains consumption in the area. So, so how do you do that actually we have to have a rig here you have to position the rig at the drain location place the anchor on the drain end penetrate the mantle to the desired depth withdraw the mantle cut the drain material above the drainage plank this is what we do. So, this is the type we have like you know this is all like as I just mentioned this all comes in rules about uh, the cost may be per meter some some numbers like 2 dollars or whatever some you know in fact uh, 30 rupees for including the cost of installation also. I mean there are some different rates one needs to work out with uh, in consultation with some of the suppliers. You have suppliers also you have installers also you have uh, full time uh, uh, persons taking everything. So, this is that uh, particular drain this is done in the field you can see that this is that mandrel like you know, this is the one that uh, first one then you insert it into the soil you cut it here leave it here just like this. Then put your uh, sand sand uh, blanket or whatever ok. So, the advantages are that it, it leads to um, increased uh, shear strength of the clay it enables the load to be applied more rapidly thus uh, better use of the construction plants in the case of embankments and steeper slopes and provision of berms could be avoided. Sometimes you know these are some of the standard techniques provision of berms to improve the stability and all that is normally done. Lower amount of fill is required as I just mentioned it greatly helps in uh, uh, reducing the amount of uh, preload required increase rate of consolidation and it saves a lot in the construction. Then increase rate of consolidation reduction time required for primary settlement structure or embankments can put into commission and use far earlier reduced reduction in the cost of maintenance. In fact, that is one of the other things stability to embankments many soft clay strata contain thin band or parting of sand or silt you know in fact in some places like you know in some, some places where you know you have alternate layers of you have a clay and then you have a sandy material. So, 
there will be some pore pressures developed and all that if you have a drainage system like that it will release all these excessive pore pressures that is a very important thing. So, uh, this have applications of PVDs have been too many like, <coughs> like people have been able to use in airports, uh, golf courses, uh, dredge consolidation, mine tailings, tailing ponds, swamp areas and wetland development, building foundations, retaining walls I mean in fact uh, it can be even used uh, for uh, drainage purpose also parking lots, landfills. Now, wherever there is a possibility of increasing the accelerate, uh, acceleration. Uh, of uh, drainage or the consolidation response, uh, this has been quite effective. So, nowadays, um, uh, of course, these are all about installation techniques where it can be done uh, with uh, modern uh, approved equipment uh, such that there is a minimum disturbance to uh, soil, so that uh, subsoil, so that uh, it does not lead to uh, the uh, permeability being low here. Uh, at this stage, I will uh, stop and uh, we will continue it further. Thank you.